Hey Inklings, I finished my binge of Daredevil Season 2, so might as well get a quick RCV out of the way. Without any spoilers, of course it's a good watch. Is it as good as the first season? No, but it's still a great season. So if you haven't watched it yet, then do so. The acting is good, the fight scenes are good, the major fight scenes are really good. That's a, that's the quickest I can get without spoilers, so... Let me throw up the spoiler shield right now for anyone who hasn't seen this show. There's going to be a lot of me talking about the plot elements and characters and acting and everything. So, you've been warned. I probably will be harsher on this than most people will, and I'm sorry if you disagree. If you do, well, let me know in the comments and we can discuss it. These are my opinions alone, and I won't begrudge you any attempt to support something you enjoy, because some nobody on the internet said otherwise. Now, into spoiler country. Let's start with the overall. It is a good season, but the problem is that with 13 episodes, you can really see the padding starting to come out. I mean, there is a solid first four episodes, but then when they introduce Elektra, you see a lot more padding. Like, quite literally, it feels like several scenes are, crap, how do we end it? Ah, uh, ninja fight! I know the first season was 13 episodes as well, but it never felt this padded out. It's like they had the story that they wanted to tell, bam, they got it out. The most logical reason is because now Matt is officially the Daredevil of Hell's Kitchen and doing his vigilante thing. But we barely see any of that. I think the first episode is the only time we actually see him doing any vigilantism, and that works well to start the arc that parallels him to the Punisher. But then they drop that whole thing, but then there's this whole tone shift from episode 5 where we get to deal with Electra and her stupidity. I'm gonna say right now, I think Alada Young played the role very well. She looked the part, she acted the part, but the problem is, it's that the role itself was so irritatingly cliché. I've said it a billion times since I officially finished this season, but when did Elektra ever actually act like Lila from Dexter? I mean, literally, her arc is being a playful, there's a darkness in you, Matt, let's play with it and kill people, because you're dark, I'm dark, let's be dark together, and then dropping that whole angle because love! And that's the arc we lead out the season with. While throughout, Karen and Foggy are all, screw this, Matt's shouldering us away, we would even see that it's not that he's choosing to be a vigilante. It's that he's choosing to fight hand ninjas with Elektra. It's a whole mess of an arc after the first four episodes that really could have been trimmed down to being like a solid eight episodes just focusing on the Punisher, or it would have worked better if they went closer to the comics with Elektra. Looks-wise, like I said, I love the costume design for her, very reminiscent of her ultimate outfit with the face covering, and it's always more interesting to see than the red bandana and dress thing. John Bernthal as the Punisher started rough for me, I'll admit. I saw a lot more of him acting very much like Shane rather than the Punisher for a good chunk of the big rooftop scene in Episode 3. And he didn't click over to having the sound and cadence of the Punisher until Episode 4, after he's already been tortured and is near death in this beautiful, great graveyard scene that almost actually got a tear out of me, I will admit that. After that, though, he works very well in the Punisher role, because honestly, it's after that where they tone back his emotion to not just coming off like a pissy kid. But maybe that's how the arc was supposed to go, because when he does shift into feeling like the Punisher, it's after he actually met real resistance against the enemy. Then you have Karen and Foggy's weird arc. Foggy is definitely feeling the weight of being partners with Matt slash the Daredevil, but when thrust into the forefront, he handles it. Even though he is whining about his insecurity and everything like that, it doesn't really play into it save for one episode, which felt weird since, you know, he would whine, whine, whine about it and then just bam, I'm awesome. He just felt written to fit whatever was going on. Karen, on the other hand, has probably the most lateral character arc, but she's honestly kind of just in this to be the love interest for Matt this season. I mean, yes, she has an arc where she basically becomes Ben Yurick, and I am hoping in season three that she, like, starts writing under the alias Ben Yurick, because that would actually just be really cool to do. But her basically becoming a researcher just feels like a lateral shift to continue the Punisher storyline. Honestly, both of them do work this season, save again for Matt and Karen's love thing, because any time they're in a scene together, it's quite literally her being a doughy-eyed, but I, I want to screw you. I love you. I'm so innocent. Tra. And it just really breaks the character down when you see how strong she was last season and how stronger she is this season, sort of. Of course, it was hinted at in the first season, but then again, this felt like an unneeded problem. Instead of a friend ditching a friend, they had to pad it out and it had to be more. Oddly, though, I think Melvin stole the show for me this season. I don't know why. 
He's he was just awesome. He's only in it like twice, but even drawing a saw blade to defend himself in a quick little who's there was a really nice nod that I just liked. But in the art of fairness, I don't want to just rag on something wholeheartedly. So what I'm going to do is post it after this. The if I did it, here's how random comic vlog for Daredevil season two. If you want to watch it, I'll have the annotation up. If not, then at least you know what I thought of Daredevil Season 2. And that's it. If you agree with me or disagree with me, leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe, share us around, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and I will see you in the next RCV. Stay gold, Inklings.